They're two of the biggest names in their fields. When you think of role-playing games, you think of Square. And when you think of animated films, you think of Disney. So when we heard that they were teaming up to create a new game that combined their strengths, we couldn't wait to find out more. This started out through an elevator ride. So Square's offices are in the same building as our offices in Tokyo. I've heard some people saying Square was the initiator. That story has been circulating around. But that's not quite what happened. Disney initiated it. The offer came to our producer first. When Sakaguchi-san and the Disney producer were talking about vague production ideas for this project, I happened to run into them and heard about it. So I told them that I might have some good ideas. So we started talking about ideas about a Mickey RPG or other types of things, and ideas started flying around. So when we finally got to an idea that we all agreed with, we said, hey, this is great, let's go. And then Square put their, as usual, incredible resources against the title and uh, came out with magic, I think. Wow! The two powerhouses have created a totally unique game, one that combines the world of Disney with the sensibility of a Final Fantasy game. Disney movies each have their own unique world, such as Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, Tarzan, and so on. The world of Kingdom Hearts combines those Disney worlds together into one world, as well as some new worlds. If I would express it in one word, it is about heart. The main character Sora travels around the Disney world and discovers its true meaning. Kingdom Hearts is about a, a character named Sora who lives on a little island and is always aspiring to go out and be an adventurer and see the world and do all kinds of wonderful things. And he does this with two friends of his, Riku and Kairi. And they sit around, they talk about what, how great it would be to adventure out. So they plan an adventure to see the world using a small raft. Each character has their own thoughts and goals about the adventure. But the day of embarkation, a storm hits the island. Not a natural storm, but a mystical one. And that's when he comes involved with Donald and Goofy, who are in the Disney universe, both the magician and the court guard. And they're off to find their King Mickey, who has disappeared. No one knows where he is. Along the way, Sora ventures through 10 different worlds and meets over 100 Disney characters. He also encounters the Heartless, a new enemy created by Square. The Heartless are shadows that were originally born from the dark side of the heart. They do not have hearts and attack those that do. They are darkness, if I express them in one word. Like the name tells you, they do not have hearts. They are enemies that appear everywhere. I wanted to create motion that has never been seen in any other game. They move like bugs or animals, definitely not like humans. And they have a world that is being sucked dry of resources. So they get smart and they try to suck the resources, the magic and the happiness and the goodness from the Disney worlds. So Sora and our adventurers Donald and Goofy go off in order to defeat the Heartless, bring equilibrium back to the universe, and happiness and magic will forever live on. The differences between Disney-style animation and the Japanese style that Square is famous for presented the game's designers with a major challenge. Prior to actually getting into the production process, I had told Disney that I would not intentionally alter any of the new Square character designs, just for them to fit into the world of Disney. I did not think it was necessary. Besides, there are already dissimilarities along Disney character designs. For example, Donald and Tarzan don't blend together well. So I did not force myself to adjust my designing style, as long as the color and the feel of the characters matched and wasn't awkward when seen on screen. 
ただその世界の中を。However, the three main characters, Sora, Donald, and Goofy, travel through all of these worlds. So we tried to maintain some consistency so they would blend well together while sustaining their visual independence. I was unsure about the Nightmare Before Christmas world and the Winnie the Pooh world in the beginning stages of production. They are both so distinct that I thought of changing the styles of the three main characters as well. With that issue sorted out, the designers then turned their imagination to the Disney characters, where they were allowed to do something that's practically unheard of, embellish their appearance for the game. We received a set of guidelines beforehand, but they asked us not to add anything that did not originally appear in the Disney cartoons. Tarzan carries a spear in the original movie, so that was no problem. Donald was allowed to carry a stick, and Goofy has a shield, but they did not permit us to let them carry swords or anything like that. We suggested the change of costume. Our director, Nomura-san, drew image illustrations for Donald and Goofy in the Little Mermaid world, and we discussed the designs with Disney, who approved them. Other costumes were drawn based on rough sketches by Disney. Nightmare Before Christmas world is not an ordinary Disney world, so the key was how well we could blend Disney characters, such as Donald and Goofy, into this particular world. Working on the Disney characters was a challenge for the Square team, but it was one they enjoyed. We animators consider Disney an inventor of film animation. Disney is the original animation company and is always in everyone's mind. I am proud of myself, accomplishing our job and also being part of a Disney project. Obviously, we have a lot of knowledge as kind of part of the deal of being with the Walt Disney Company about the characters in the worlds that we tried to share with them. So we had little chalk talks. We connected them with some of the animators from the Walt Disney Company from Feature Animation and told them a little bit about what the motivation was for the character. Disney offered a class for a day. We learned the basics of how a Disney film is made. After that, I watched tons of videos since each movie has a different feel. I was watching nothing but Disney videos for six months. I studied the characteristics of each character and then delivered them into the game. And I think that's really displayed beautifully in how well they animated the characters in 3D. They move just like they're 2D animated in a lot of ways. And so those chalk talks think really paid off. After spending a considerable amount of time with the Kingdom Hearts team, we couldn't help but wonder what Walt would think of Square and Disney's latest creation. I would only hope that Walt and everyone else that were involved in Walt Disney Company for all those years and created such a wonderful legacy would be proud and really excited about how innovatively this product will go out there and how creatively it pushed the limits. Be sure to check back next month as we take a closer look at the gameplay of Kingdom Hearts. when Final Fantasy-style characters are thrust into the Disney universe. You get a new action RPG game called Kingdom Hearts. If you saw our story last month, you learned how these two heavyweights, Disney and Square, came together to seamlessly blend the two worlds. This month, we're going to dive deeper into the gameplay and explore this immersive new action RPG. In the beginning of the game, Sora starts his journey from his home, while at the same time Donald and Goofy begin their journey. The three meet in Travis Town and travel to different Disney worlds, including Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, and The Nightmare Before Christmas. Since each of the game's worlds are so different, we figured that everyone involved in the game had a favorite. My favorite is The Nightmare Before Christmas world. It has a more unique look than the others. The rest of the game is made using animation cells, but the Nightmare World is made from actual photographs. We achieved an interesting look with combinations of the 3D game world and real photos. I'm really pleased with the results. I think the Peter Pan and Aladdin worlds are very interesting. Especially the mothership fight in the Peter Pan world. So, Kyrie's home is out there somewhere, right? Could be. My favorite is Destiny Island, because when I designed it, I wanted to get away from work and go to a tropical island. This island looks very relaxing. 
At the same time, this world contains many keys that help you solve problems later in the game. It's a very important location. To help him make his way through all of these amazing worlds, Sora carries a unique weapon. One of the main items Sora will carry is the Keyblade. It is not only a weapon to defeat enemies, but it has a symbolic purpose of locking the door to each world. The Keyblade's appearance and abilities change depending on what kind of chain is attached. These key chains alter Sora's attacking ability in different ways. For example, one of them will raise Sora's attacking ability while at the same time drastically reducing his magic points. For those of you who are Final Fantasy fanatics, you won't be disappointed. Even though Kingdom Hearts is not a traditional RPG, gamers will definitely recognize several elements from the famed RPG series. Well, since the core staff of this game has worked on Final Fantasy games in the past, we thought it was about time we try something different. I like RPGs because they are the type of game that players get deeply involved in. Sometimes RPGs have a hard time including action elements into the game. So we incorporated lots of action into Kingdom Hearts to the point where some may call it an action game. Like Final Fantasy, this game also has experience points. The difference is that you can earn experience points during battles, whereas you earn them after you finish each battle in Final Fantasy. For example, if you dodge an enemy's attack, you earn a point. As your character's experience points go up, your character becomes stronger. Since action is heavily incorporated into this game, a skilled action game player may move up to different stages without having a substantial amount of experience points normally needed to move up. Some characters from the Final Fantasy series that will appear are Tidus, Waka, Sophie, Yuffie, Sid, Mog, Squall, Cloud, and Eris. In all of Square's games, music has been a crucial element of the storytelling. Kingdom Hearts carries on that tradition. I tried not to use any music that already exists. My concern was to compose music that flows nicely and matches the mood. I did use some original Disney music, but tried to blend it well so that listeners would not feel awkward when my original music is mixed in. Anyway, my main concern is the flow of the music. There are 76 tracks, which is more than usual. I usually use 50 to 60 tracks. We use the full 100-piece orchestra to record the theme song. I think a lot more people participated in this music process compared to our usual work. As Sora travels through the worlds of Kingdom Hearts, he makes use of a ship that's not like anything you've seen before. After finishing a world, the characters get a saving point where there are entrances and exits to each world, and the characters can cross the space between worlds in the gummy ship. The gummy ship is owned by King Mickey, and Chip and Dale are the engineers who lend the ship to Donald and Goofy to use on their quest. Sora joins them and is allowed to fly on the ship. The gummy ship is not only a vehicle, but also a way to obtain items. Users can customize the shape and type of the ship to whatever they choose. By using the gummy ship, Sora and his crew members travel freely between different worlds. Because each gummy block comes with different features, such as an engine or a laser, the ship's capabilities change as you add or remove different blocks. While we had the chance, we had to ask if the developers at Square had any hints to help us through Kingdom Hearts. People just asked me questions about Aladdin yesterday, like, where should I go, or I can't open one of the doors, etc. There are always hints hidden somewhere in the game. I personally don't like including conversation that is totally irrelevant to the story or interrupts the flow of the game. Unlike many other RPGs which let you obtain information from the same character over and over, you need to concentrate on listening to each and every word any character says in this game. Otherwise you may miss very important hints and get yourself in deep trouble. Yesterday I told the person who was looking for hints in Aladdin to remember what other characters were saying. Then he seemed to understand. 
In a game this deep, you'll have to keep your eyes and ears open. But if you do, you'll experience a game that's like nothing that's come before it, bringing together two amazing companies to tell one amazing story. It's Kingdom Hearts, and it's available now only for the PlayStation 2.